All right, um, I'm going to do another um, differential equation, and we're going to find the solution to this differential equation using separation of variables. So here's a free response question uh, that you may see. You're going to be able to use your calculator in this, so be ready to use that when needed. Um, the first part says find the solution of the differential equation. When they ask you to solve the differential equation, the first thing is we want to separate variables. Okay, so we want to separate variables. All right, and going through and doing that. Okay, so the first thing is this is dy dx. So this is the bottom. I'm going to multiply ey, all right, dy to their side. We're going to multiply. We have 3x squared, all right, plus 2x, and that's going to be times dx. We're then going to integrate both sides. Integrate, all right. Integrate both sides. Um, and then the antiderivative of e to the y is e to the y. And the other side is going to be x to the third, all right, plus x squared. x squared plus c. Don't forget your c. And add c. All right, that's where we get right there. Okay. From here, all right, we're going to take our initial condition because they give us this initial condition right here. And we're going to use that to help us solve for C. So use initial condition. So use initial condition or use point. Maybe I'll just say this. Use point all right, to solve all right, for C. All right, so we're going to use this point. I'm going to plug in 0 for X and 2 in for Y. So we have E squared equals 0 plus 0 plus C. So we know C equals E squared. Let's keep the E B squared. So we're going to use that, plug it back in. So we have e to the y equals x cubed plus x squared plus e squared. From here, we're going to solve for y. All right, the final part is solve for y. All right, and we're going to natural log both sides. So y is going to equal the natural log of this quantity x cubed, all right, plus x squared plus e squared. Boom. Nailed it. We just solved this differential equation. We're going to box it. We'll put a little bow on top of it. All right. And send it off to grandma. All right. Cool. Now, we're going to expand this. So that's what you should know how to do. Now, from this, there's some different problems that we're going to use with this. And this is where we're going to use your calculator. So if you take out your calculators. And so we take out your calculator. And we find we have one like this. Now, for, to help us figure out this all right, value, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and take our equation. Hopefully, you can find our equation right here. And it's going to be natural log of x cubed plus x squared plus e squared. Okay, so take out your calculator, and we're going to put this in our y equals. So we go to our y equals. All right, I'm clear what I had in my previous problem. And we're going to put in natural log, all right, of the quantity x cubed, all right, plus x squared, and hopefully you're following along at home, all right, plus e, all right, squared, and it's hip to e squared. All right, we're going to close parentheses. Now, we're looking for the domain of this. Now, we're looking for the domain. Um, there is one thing that we probably want to try to figure out, is that right here, what cannot be true for this right here is that actually in this problem, okay, I'm actually going to get rid of all right, the natural log because I'm going to use this to help me figure this out because inside all right, of our problem here, we cannot have all right, any negatives, okay, any negatives, all right, and we can't have zero inside the log. So I'm going to actually delete that, and I'm going to take this, I'm going to zoom six, all right, and I'm going to just grab this on a 10 by 10 window. Oopsies, go to argument, probably because I have this right there. I'm going to delete that. There we go. Then let's graph this right here, and let's see what happens here. So what we want to do is we can't have zeros, and everything has to be positive. And so right here, if you graph this normally, what would happen is that um, you wouldn't be able to find this value right there very easily. Okay, so if you went over here and you said the natural log of y1, okay, um, and taking this out, so I'm just going to show you what this would look like on the other part, okay? So if you go to natural log, all right, natural log, and I'm going to go to vars, all right, y vars, I'm going to use function y1 here, okay? So essentially, it's going to just take the natural log of this function on top, and let's graph these. And so what you see, all right, is you see this point right there, okay? And here, it should have some sort of value, but we know that the natural log can't be zero, 
And so for this one, we're going to find this value, all right, and where this starts by finding the zeros of our function. And we're going to find the zeros of this first one. And I'm going to go to the left side. This is where, all right, it's going to take me a little, me a little while in doing this, so if you, you can do it a little faster, all right. And we're going to go to the left side of this, all right, press Enter. And now we're going to go to the right side, press Enter. And we'll guess that right there. And we see that we have negative 2.344. All right, I'm going to take that and we're just going to plot that right there. And so what we know for this domain of f that we found right here, which equals y, is that this, all right, negative 0.3544, is that all x values have to be greater than negative 2.344 because if they were not, um, and it can't be equal to, because if it was equal to, then it would be equal to zero, and you can't have the natural log of zero. So that is how we find the domain of this function. All right. There are some other problems. So, if, for example, if we want to continue, for what values of x does this have a point of inflection? All right. And we can find points of inflection. All right. Points of inflection are where we have this function right here. And we can actually take the derivative of this. All right. And actually, points of inflection, we can take the second derivative. So if we take our function right here and bring this down, that's what I'm going to do right here. We're going to take and find the second derivative of this because points of inflection are the second derivative where it changes signs. And so if I go right here and say, okay, y prime is going to equal 1 over, all right, um, 1 over x cubed plus x squared plus e squared, all right, times the derivative of the inside, which would be 3x squared, all right, plus 2x, all right, e is a constant, so that would just be 0. And then from here, if we take this, all right, we can use it one more time. Um, and we can go right here where y double prime, okay? And I'm just going to rewrite this as 3x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus x squared plus e squared. And we're going to do the quotient rule here. They drew it at the top, which is going to be 6x plus 2 times the bottom, which is going to be x to the third plus x squared plus e squared minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 3x squared plus 2x times the top, which is 3x squared plus 2x all over the bottom squared. All right. And we're just going to put in x cubed plus x squared plus e squared y squared. All right. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the points of inflection are for this one. So we can take our calculators again. And if we just take this top portion, we're trying to figure out where does y diet double prime change signs? Change signs. Okay, where does that change signs? And so if you take this and you go to your y equals, all right, I'm going to clear this right here, both of these, um, and we can input this these values in, all right? Um, we can also determine where this is going to be a maximum. In. So actually, I'm going to put this one in here. All right, actually the derivative, because it might be a little bit easier and a little faster, actually. Because for our derivative, it's where the derivative changes from pos or increasing and decreasing. All right, or decreasing and increasing. So let's just check this out. And we have square, and then we have plus, all right, oopsies. I keep on hitting the wrong one. And we're going to raise that to this second power. All right. And having this, we can graph this. Two. And so we'll see where does this change. Do we have any maximum mins here? All right. Uh, there we go. And we see this right here. So. It appears in this problem is that we have a min here and a max there, and this just goes down in vertical axis up there. And so, from here, um, we're going to find the min. So, if you can calculate, go down to min plus three. We can find the min of this value by going to the right side and write that down. Okay, and we'll press enter. All right, and then we'll go to the left side. Oh, this would be right side, I apologize. Right bound. And we'll press enter here. Press enter. And where is that minimum going to be? So we have 
this right there is going to be our first one. Oopsies. So we have our first one, which is going to be at that negative 3, 3. Okay, because that's where we change from decrease to increasing. And then we're going to go one more time, and we got to figure out this max. So we can second calculate. And then we're going to figure out our max, which is at 4, right there. And so we can go to this other side. We're going to figure out this max right there. And it's going to go over there, and you can figure that out. And it's going through. Okay? So once you have that, then we can figure out all of our remaining parts. And we'll press Enter. Yes, and we have that. So hopefully that will give us our value, and we'll put that one right there. So for our final, where's our points of inflection? Well, our point of inflection is going to be at x equaling this, and then x equaling that. We don't care about the y's. All right. We did. You could use the second uh, derivative, but using the first derivative made it a little bit faster when we're finding those out. And there you go. Well, I hope this helped you out. Um, the key thing was, first off, solving a differential equation. All right, solving a differential equation. And that's what we did here. And using this differential equation, we expanded it to find the domain of the function and also using that to find the points of inflection um, from the original solution. All right, well, hope this helps you out. And good luck and God bless and the rest of your problems.